You're listening to the Patenting for Inventors podcast, part of the Look Legal Pods from the law firm of Nolan Hyman, the number one source for your intellectual property, business, and entertainment law needs. Now here's your host, registered patent attorney, Adam Diamond. Hello and welcome to the Patenting for Inventors podcast. My name is Adam Diamond, a registered patent attorney and partner at the law firm of Nolan Hyman in Los Angeles, California. This is episode 146, update on the public disclosure and on-sale doctrine, secret methods. I don't usually talk too much about individual cases in this podcast, but that's what I'm going to do here because there's been some clarification about what the law is when it comes to public disclosures and the on-sale bar. I talked about this in a previous episode, but the reason that you need to be careful about any public disclosures or sales of your invention is that if you disclose or sell something publicly and there's no patent application on file, if you file after you disclose something publicly, then you can't get a patent on it anymore. You give up any potential patent rights that and the invention is now in the public domain. Now, there are a couple of exceptions, and one is called the 12-month grace period, and it doesn't apply every, everywhere in the world, but it does apply in the United States. And the grace period is that if you have disclosed something um, about your invention publicly, you actually have 12 months to file an application before your disclosure can be used against you. So don't come to me after your invention has been on the public for more than a year and tell me, tell me you want a patent on it. It's too late. Uh, there's another exception for experimental use, but for most people, that's not going to apply. It's pretty strict. So it sounds pretty simple. Don't publicly disclose your invention or sell it without a patent application on file, but sometimes there are some gray areas. What if your public disclosure is secret? Now, it sounds like an oxymoron, but this was a real case. Picture it as the mid-1800s, and Samuel Barnes is tinkering away, trying to create something to make his life a little bit more comfortable for all those corset-wearing folks out there. And he comes up with a brand new type of corset spring. He shows it to his friend, Elizabeth Lippman. She's impressed and she starts using it right away. So far, so good, right? Well, here's where things get interesting. Elizabeth used that spring in her corset for years. It wasn't a big public display or anything. Just her privately enjoying her newfound comfort under her clothes. But here's the catch. Samuel didn't rush to the patent office. Nope. He waited over a decade before he thought, maybe I should patent this thing. So what's the big deal? You might think, as long as Elizabeth wasn't strutting her stuff on the runway with her corset spring, it wouldn't count as a public use. But oh, how wrong that would be. The Supreme Court took a look at this case and said, wait a minute, Samuel. Elizabeth was using that spring without any secrecy or restrictions. And that's public use, my friend. Uh, In other words, even though Elizabeth was just wearing the corset in her everyday life, It was enough to start the clock ticking on Samuel's patent rights. And because he waited too long to file, his patent went poof, just like that. Now, similar to the public use doctrine is the on-sale bar. It's really the same thing. If you sell something or you offer to sell something and there's no patent application for it, that starts the clock ticking. In the U.S., you better get something on file within 12 months uh, of that date. And I tell clients, ideally get it filed before any sale or any public use, because if you're interested in any kind of foreign protection, it might be impossible to get in some countries if you sold your product one day and then tried to file a patent application on the next day. could be too late. Now, why do we have the on-sale bar at all? Why can't someone just patent their invention after they've been publicly using it or selling it for a while? The on-sale bar acts like a referee, uh, ensuring that no inventor can play the system by delaying their patent filing while still profiting from their invention. What you don't want to happen is that you start making a product because you've looked and you see there's no patent on it. And then 10 years later, someone comes and says, oh yeah, by the way, I've seen that you've made tons of money in a product and I didn't file a patent, op- patent application on it before, but I just filed one now and you have to stop doing it. Now, that doesn't seem fair either. So the rule is, if you want to patent your invention, you have to do it early on in the process or else anyone can do it. The rule forces a choice. Seek a patent and share your invention with the world or keep it as a trade secret and forfeit patent protection. And it seems like almost every time there's a case, whether there's uh, whether something is considered public or not or sale or not, uh, the courts seem to always come on the side that it is a public use or a public sale. So what's the update here? Uh, the updates on the on-sale bar, and it's about a secret process 
and whether the on-sale bar applies. So let me give a few hypothetical examples. Let's say that you've concocted the world's smoothest coffee brew method, but it's a secret recipe. You start selling this miraculous coffee drip at hip cafes, and you keep the brewing method under a lock and key. Does the on-sale bar apply even though you've never sold the method and the method is still private, you've only sold the coffee that used the method. And let's sprinkle in a few more examples. Uh, picture a chef who invents a new way to age steak that results in the most tender and flavorful meat. Uh, he starts selling these steaks at his restaurant, uh, but he keeps the aging process a guarded secret. Under the on-sale bar, if he tries to patent this aging process after the steaks hit the market, does this stop the chef from trying to get a patent on his method, even though the method is never public and he never sold the method? He only sold the stakes. Uh, one last example. Let's say you're a software developer. You created an innovative algorithm that significantly speeds up processing. Uh, she integrates it into her products and starts selling them, enjoying substantial commercial success, all while keeping the algorithm confidential. You know, does that start the on-sale uh, bar? Well, the Federal Circuit just came out with a decision and answered this question. It's the case of Selenis v. ITC. And they said that even though the secret method was not sold and the secret method was not publicly disclosed, selling the product that used the secret method does trigger the on-sale bar. So again, the courts are really taking a broad view of what on-sale means in terms of when the clock starts to tick for filing a patent application. I'm not a European patent attorney, but I read that in Europe, uh, they do allow inventors to patent processes after the products are sold, provided that the process isn't obvious from the product. But the U.S. is stricter, so it's possible that in some situations you can get a patent in Europe, but not in the United States. It depends on the facts of what, that, what has happened. So thanks for listening to the Patenting for Inventors podcast. Keep those inventive wheels turning and perhaps double check your patent strategy before your next big market move. And until next time, I'm Adam Diamond, and keep on inventing. Thanks for listening to the Patenting for Inventors podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please kindly rate and review on your favorite podcast platform. The contents of this podcast are intended for general informational purposes only. The facts of every legal matter are unique, and the content of this podcast should not be construed as offering legal advice for your specific legal situation. For more information about how we can help with your own legal needs, check out our services at nolanhyman.com. That's N-O-L-A-N-H-E-I-M-A-N-N.com. Or call Adam Diamond directly at 424-281-0162. The preceding information may be considered an attorney advertisement and does not establish any attorney-client relationship. 